When most people think about the different types of mountain bikes, hardtails and full suspensions are what come to mind. But there's another type out there that's been around since the beginning of mountain bike time, the fully rigid bike. If you've ever accidentally locked out your fork and headed downhill, you may be asking yourself, why would anyone go without suspension on purpose? In this video, I'm going to explain why I love riding a fully rigid mountain bike and some of the reasons you might too. Like I said, fully rigid bikes have been around since not just the beginning of mountain bikes, but bikes in general. I'm pretty sure the first person to build a bike wasn't too concerned about having the plushest ride. They just wanted the thing to be able to move. While suspension forks and then full suspension bikes would eventually take over the mountain bike market, fully rigid bikes and rigid forks have always been an option. There are some obvious downsides to a rigid bike, lack of traction and control over technical surfaces, a jarring and uncomfortable ride, but there are a surprising amount of upsides to ditching suspension too. Let's get into them. The first and maybe most noticeable thing when riding a rigid bike is how different the bike feels. I'm not just talking about feeling every bump though, everything feels efficient. When you pedal, there's zero pedal bob or fork compression, so all of that power you put down goes straight to the tire. You can stand and pedal whenever you want without having to lock out the fork or feel like you're bobbing up and down. A common word used to describe the steering feel is direct. When you turn the bars, there's no squish or other movement to deaden the turn. It might also be that rigid bikes or hardtails with a rigid fork on them tend to have steeper head tube angles, more on that later, but the steering feels quick and efficient. Thanks to bike packing, rigid mountain bikes have actually seen a bit of a resurgence in popularity as of late. A hardtail frame with a rigid fork is the ultimate choice for reliability while simultaneously providing tons of mounting points for gear. Utility forks are rigid forks made of everything from steel to carbon and have mounts for bottle and gear cages, fenders, headlights, whatever. There are ways to add mounting locations to suspension forks, but with straps and adhesives holding them on, there's always a risk they can be broken off, especially if you crash. That touches on another benefit of rigid forks though, simplicity. I talked about this in my video on why you should ride a hardtail, but a simpler design tends to be more reliable and require less service. While there's not a huge chance that something will break on your suspension fork, there's an even slimmer chance of breakage on a rigid fork. A rigid fork also doesn't require any maintenance like fluid and bushing changes that can impact its performance. It's just always there holding your bike up. If you like to look at bike geometry charts, you've probably noticed a little note that says something like, measured with a 130mm fork at 25% sag. Geocharts have this disclaimer because a bike that has suspension doesn't really have a stable geometry. It's constantly changing as the suspension compresses. That means your head tube angle, seat tube angle, stack, reach, those change as the suspension cycles, which in turn means the way the bike handles is also constantly changing. That's not ideal. This is a major consideration in rear suspension designs, but the now defunct Trust Performance fork manufacturer tried to remedy this with the front fork. They had a radical design that decreased the fork offset on compression, but it never really caught on despite mostly positive reviews. To state the obvious, rigid bikes don't have this issue. The geometry and handling stays the same no matter what you're riding up, down, or over, and is one reason that steering feels so direct and predictable. One of my all-time favorite setups to ride is a fully rigid bike with 29 plus tires. There's a fun factor that's kind of hard to explain, but I think the best way to think about it is what if you took your childhood bike but gave it modern geometry and massive tires? It makes the trails you've ridden a million times difficult again, and I'm pretty sure that challenge is half the fun of mountain biking. You have to rely so much more on your technique instead of having the suspension bail you out, and obstacles that you didn't really notice before are now something to play and have fun on. If you enjoy a technical challenge and pushing your skills, you will love riding a rigid bike. So now that I've definitely convinced you that you want to ride a rigid bike, what do you need to do about it? If you're wanting to ride a rigid bike and you have a hardtail in your bike stable, there's no need to run out and buy a whole other bike. You can just buy an aftermarket rigid fork and put it on that hardtail. One of the most important things to consider when choosing a rigid fork though is the axle to crown measurement. This is the distance between the axle and basically the top of the fork. The more travel a suspension fork has, the longer its axle to crown measurement. Most rigid forks out there have an A to C length around 480 millimeters, which is about the same as a 100 millimeter suspension fork. Put one of those forks on a bike that has 130 or 140 millimeters of travel, the geometry will be way different than it was designed, and it's probably not gonna ride the way that you hoped. 
Luckily, Niner and Envy and a few other small manufacturers have options from 490 to 500 millimeters, which is more in line with a 120 to 130 mil travel fork. Using one of these will keep the front end of your bike up higher and lessen the overall geometry changes. So long story short, if you're wanting to convert a hardtail into a fully rigid bike and want the geometry to stay the same, be sure to look for a fork with an appropriate axle to crown measurement. You do also need to consider if you need a tapered or straight steerer tube and the axle spacing you currently have on your wheels, but there are a lot of options out there to suit most of these combinations. I love riding fully rigid bikes, and I'm not just talking about on my fat bike in the winter. They're simple, they're fun, and they make the trail more challenging. So if you're looking to change things up, or you're kind of bored with the trails that you ride all the time, then maybe a rigid fork and a fully rigid bike is right for you. Just as a little sneak at what's ahead, I have a fully rigid fork on its way. It's been coming for forever from China. Who knows if it'll ever get here, but if it does, then I'm going to have a new bike build in the works. So look forward to that. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see it or if you want to see any of my other videos in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.